Buongiorno a tutti voi, distinguished personalities, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it's really a pleasure and honor to be here again with many of you, with many friends, uh, not only to stay and discuss, but also to build community and networks towards a better, more human 21st century. This is a really magnificent place. Uh, not only this mag uh, mag um, Magna Aula, but also university. A historical city with so many young people. It's a special place to stop by and to reflect. At these great places of humanity like Bologna and many others, especially in Europe, uh, three sources of power usually were meeting. Studiorum, imperiorum, sacerdotum, to move the world. Today and this week, people from academic, political, and religious life will meet here to discuss within the framework of European Academy of Religion to see common ground and common good in connection to religious freedom. This week is a special time because we had 30th birthday of the most popular European program. I was at this program and I'm happy that especially program on education is so inspirational and popular, Erasmus, Erasmus Plus, called today. I had privilege to start Erasmus Mundus part, which is excellent uh, and a very strong um, way how to build interdisciplinarity, international cooperation of our institutions, and more open world in 21st century. Nine million participants have experience through uh, Erasmus and Erasmus Plus. For the current seven years, we have uh, already more than 16 billion euros uh, devoted to support access, quality, relevance of education, mobility, and recognition of results. Educational cooperation should include also religious studies and scholars because, religion, uh, because education unites. Lansan Mauni in Deutsch, Bildung verbindet. If there is anybody from Russia, Abrazovanie Saedinyayet. So we need more and better education to live together. As you all know, European Commission and European Parliament welcome the establishment and commitment of the European Academy of Religion. Wherever in, especially Middle East countries, I spoke about this network, it opened a lot of interest and I'm glad. Our societies, our graduates, our citizens cannot suffer from modern form of illiteracy, lack of religious knowledge. They need to be prepared for life in the real world, not in artificial world. Those who do not understand religion, and especially abuse, abuse of religion, cannot understand what is going on in the world. And then we cannot help the world to find more peace, stability, and sustainable development. Because ignorance breeds intolerance. And from intolerance, there are many and fast tracks towards populism, oppression, or violence, and conflict. We all have to learn how to live in diversity. Diversity is growing. For example, because of migration. United Nations, a year ago, recorded the, high, uh, the highest numbers in history, both in migration, 244 million people on move, and also in forced, enforced uh, migration or uh, refugee reality. So this is a challenge. And secondly, globalization is going on. Uh, is it a problem? It's reality, and we, ne we need to use it for humanity to give globalization human face, to nurture spirit of one mankind, sense of together togetherness and interdependence. Diversity is human reality, defining and constitutive principle. We all are different in this magnificent Aula Magda Santa Lucia, in the city of Bologna, in this country, on this continent, in this world. But we all need to know and accept 
the second part of the same truth and constitutive principle. We all are equal in dignity. Whether we are born to noble, royal, even family, or to the homeless ambient, the most important moral aspect of education is to teach new generations to understand and promote this motto in life that we can and should live united in diversity. That dignity of each human person is undeniable and unviolable, including his or her rights. That human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights and should behave to one another in the spirit of brotherhood. These are, these are not my words, but the quote from the Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I wish all here represented universities to be great protagonists of their vocation because unity in diversity means, in short, university. Universities should be places of acquisition of new knowledge, but also ethics of responsibility. European Academy can provide a great cooperational platform for such objectives. For living together in peace and freedom, we also need civil state as a protector of civility, security, and justice. True secular state is a civil state based on citizenship. It is independent from ideology or from religion. Fair secular state does not replace religions by artificial uh, ideology or secularism, but opens and guarantees public space for plurality of religions and plurality of convictions. I was pleased in Iraq in February this year when I listened to uh, Chaldean Patriarch Louis Rafael Sacco and to Grand Ayatollah Al Najafi speaking the same language that they see they want to see in future Iraq as a civil state, not religious, but civil state based on citizenship and equality. Your del deliberations here within the annual Ex Nihilo Zero Conference can provide a lot of constructional elements and input to current quest for better, more peaceful 21st century. Religion and law, religion and environment, religion and economy, society, peace, security, culture, intra and inter-religious dialogue and relations, etc., are important components of such desires. I wish you a lot of openness and inspiration during this week. Ladies and gentlemen, for freedom of religion or belief is essential value and the litmus test for human rights. Because where religious freedom is oppressed or disrespected, civil and political rights have a similar status. Freedom of thought, conscience, of religion and conviction is the civilizational issue. Situation today is worrying and trends are negative. Level of religious freedom in the world is low and declining and the consequences are less security and more migra migration. You know surely Pew Research Center figures. Scope of restrictions varies from intolerance and discrimination to persecution or even genocide. Drivers are states, but also non-state actors and social groups. Restrictions are critical not only in the Middle East or Near East, Africa or Asia. In Europe, the latest restricting move was adopted against Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia. This ban based on law against extremism, I found unjust and unsubstantiated. In many countries today, laws aimed at fighting terrorism, extremism, radicalization, take form and, <coughs> and freedom of expression as a target. Similarly, form is victim in countries where anti-conversion or anti-blasphemy laws legitimize and legalize cases of religious discrimination and persecution. But <clears throat> there are also positive and encouraging signs your gathering to hold this first annual conference is one of them. Ten days ago, European Union and 28 member states 
signed new consensus for development under the title Our World, Our Dignity, Our Future. Within this, we count on the role and partnership with civil society, with religious actors, communities, leaders, and faith-based organizations. German initiative called PART, Partnership of Religion and Development, was endorsed by the whole European Union. With traditional European development days, there was a policy panel on the role of religions in building local communities. It was the first time in the tradition of European development days. For the first time in 25 years, this week, last week, sorry, um, of uh, Lorenzo Natali Media, Media Prize to journalists, we have uh, awarded professional and amateur journalists for their writing or media stories about freedom of religion or belief or interfaith dialogue and cooperation. First time in 25 years. And another example, yesterday ended religious forum in Potsdam near Berlin, organized in context of G20 Interface Summit. It sent a clear message to G20 political leaders to recognize and increase the role of religious actors in refugee resettlement. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom and responsibility are two sides of the same coin. When I meet religious leaders in the world, I speak always about freedom and responsibility. Freedom without responsibility is not sustainable. Many religious leaders have far more authority and influence than many political leaders today. They can help and they should help to solve conflicts and build peace. We all applauded in 1986 a Sisi meeting of major religions as we did again last autumn to commemorate and to go on. The world is looking with expectations to dialogue, cooperation, and bridge building between institutions of Christianity and Islam by Pope Francis and Grand Mufti of Al-Azhar in presence of Orthodox Ecumenical Patriarch Bartolomeo or Coptic Pope Tavadros II. This helps to build peace more than many fatwas or political docu pontifical documents. Religion is often viewed as a force that sows divisions between people. But the world's most prominent religious leaders have come together this week, actually, to present a different vision of how faith can work in the world. In a rare move, major religious leaders, from Pope Francis through Rabbi Gottstein, from Eliyah Interfaith Institute to Dalai Lama, issued a joint appeal this Wednesday asking people to follow a simple bit of advice. It sounds, make friends with people of other faiths. Ladies and gentlemen, many leaders today claim my country first, America first, Britain first, Slovakia first, or my nation first, my religion first, my ethnic group first. We remember claims of my race or my social class first, especially in communist part of Europe, post-communist part. They ended in tragedies of civil wars, persecutions, holocaust, or gulags. Therefore, we need leaders, academic, political, religious, societal, claiming common good first. This is not empty phrase. This is very supra important point. Because common good, it is human dignity. It is equality, justice, subsidiarity, shared and justified interests. Last December, I said here that together, with many of you, I refuse theory of clash of civilizations. This is not a necessity above us. But there is a clash in the world today with a different dividing line. It's a clash of humanity on one side with convictions and ideologies of superiority. Superiority based on race, ethnicity, social position, or religion. And this ideology or conviction leads to hatred, conflict, and violence. The other side is humanity with its diverse cultures, based on shared universal values and common good. Dividing lines are not state borders or continental borders. 
It is respect to human dignity. The line means respect or disrespect to human dignity for all and everywhere, not just for some, for ours, nashi ne nashi, ours, non ours. Dividing line goes through our minds and hearts. Last December also I quoted here Eli Wiesel, who said that evil has a sister. It's um, indifference. Today I want to tell you evil has several siblings. Indifference is one of them very influential. Evil has allies. They are influential and they are inexpensive to acquire. It's indifference, ignorance and fear. Indifference if we don't care. Ignorance if we don't know and even are not interested to know. And fear when we are scared. Scared to say something or to do something. From this point of view, and I conclude here, the European Academy of Religion, all of you, has an important role to play. Academy as a network must help to invest our knowledge, our time, our energy and goodwill into new commitment, new knowledge and new courage to make a difference, to help humanity and solidarity to prevail. I wish you successful conference. Molti auguri e grazie di tutti.